Welcome back to BitBoy Crypto. Today, we're going to be taking a look at is Ripple wanting to work with the U.S. government on their Federal Reserve payment system? It looks like there could be some indication that they may be interested. We're also going to be taking a look at Cosmos. And is this the project that is going to knock out Ethereum? Could be. We have some reason to think. We're also going to be taking a look at Walmart and why they're not going to face the same pushback with their cryptocurrency that Facebook and Libra. And if you're in the UK and you haven't filed your crypto taxes, you may want to be aware because they are coming for your information. So here we go, guys. Looking at the markets, by the time I post this video, the market information may be a little outdated. I'm going to post this video a little bit later tonight, but we've had a dip. The dip that we've all been dreading after eight or maybe it was seven, depending on where you live, straight days of green for Bitcoin, we have now dropped down back around the 11,400 number. Bitcoin dominance for the first time in days, altcoin lovers, has fallen. Will we see that number drop back below 68%? It looked like 70% was an inevitability, but maybe not anymore. And the overall market cap is now for the first time in several days down below uh, $300 billion. Or I don't know, maybe it was yesterday. It seems like it's been a long time because the price is doing real well. But it is definitely under $300 billion at this point. Biggest winners of the day. We have Lisk, Unetwork, Aurora, Metaverse, ETP, and Next. Biggest uh, losers of the day, ABBC coin. Told you that looked like a pump and dump yesterday. GX Chainsaw, Hypercash, and Komodo. Quick look at Coin360. And for the first time, I believe since I've been using this website to show you guys the market, we have a ton of red Bitcoin leading the way. But some are down even more. Litecoin, not surprisingly, directly following the happening, is down uh, almost 6% today. EOS continuing to tumble 8% down. Neo, Atom, uh, which is Cosmos, we're going to be talking about in a second, all down. So here we are on BitBoyCrypto.com, the news website of winners because I use it, obviously. Uh, let's check this out. If you want to visit bitboycrypto.com, I'll put the link right above. So here we go. We got the Ripple team. Are they going to get with the U.S. government to work on this Federal Reserve 24-7, 365, fast uh, transaction settlement pro, uh, platform, system, program, whatever you want to call it. Now, when it comes to Ripple, right... Uh, you guys know I've talked about Ripple on the channel before. It's not, uh, you know, my favorite cryptocurrency by any stretch of the imagination. Try to be unbiased when I report on it. But one thing is for sure, that there have been stories within the XRP community that have basically just echoed within an echo chamber. They are stories that come inside the community and they don't really reach the greater crypto community at large. And we go back to the $589 per Ripple story or per, uh, excuse me, per XRP story. And, you know, this was a story that really heavily got in the rotation of the XRP YouTubers, the XRP community. People knew about this story, but the greater crypto community at large didn't hear about this until several days later. And then, of course, it became a meme, right? The $589 XRP. The XRP community, a lot of those people still believe in that. And I'm not here to judge whether or not I feel like that is true. The point is that often XRP stories, they get circulated through the community and don't really, they just turn out to be rumors. They stay in the echo chamber. They don't reach the larger crypto community. However, this seems to be different because we have uh, the... Uh, global Head of Infrastructure Innovation for Ripple, Dip Rao, Deep Row, not really 100% sure how to pronounce that. Um, is that a Dilip? Dilip Rao, how about that? Um, I need to add an L there. I misspelled it. I'll make sure I fix that before you even click on this link. Uh, and basically, uh, he came out and, and retweeted the Fed Payments Improvement, the verified account. He retweeted it. Uh, their announcement about the new, uh, you know, settlement service. And he said, great move, FedNow. We'll drive the transformation to a real-time payments infrastructure around the world, both domestic and cross-border at Ripple Mission. So he's basically saying that this lines up with the mission for Ripple. And it does. It totally makes sense. Now, I'm not 100% sure if 
this payment platform will allow cross-border transactions or if it will be just in the United States. But due to the connectivity of the world, I believe it probably will be you know, along the same lines of what Ripple's trying to do with XRapid. And since XRapid is working very well, you may hate Ripple, but XRapid is a great, robust platform that is working. A lot of places are using it. MoneyGram recently just said that they are officially using it, uh, you know, in an earnings call. So all of these things really add up to the fact that XRapid is working well. And so if XRapid has a prototype, has a system that the Fed can use can duplicate in or replicate in order to you know help with their platform then it should be something they're gonna you know they could work together on so we'll have to see but if you thought the xrp people were loud about their favorite coin just wait to see what will happen if they actually start working with the u.s government now this platform isn't due out until 2023 to 2024 so certainly none of these decisions internally have been made you know and set in stone we don't even know if ripple reaches out to the U.S. government, if they will work with them. But if they do, that's going to be a really big story for cryptocurrency. So now Walmart taking the smarter approach. Uh, here we go. Walmart sneaking into cryptocurrency from the back. So recently, we had the U.S. government uh, all over Facebook's Libra coin. And it's become clear that the U.S. government does not like Facebook. There has been a lot of hacks. Basically, Facebook has been a big headache for them. But really more concerning, they they believe that Libra has a chance to trump the U.S. dollar. No pun intended. They're not necessarily scared of Bitcoin. They do realize they can't stop it. But they're not as scared of Bitcoin as they are of Facebook. Now, they understand they can't ban, uh, ban Bitcoin at the same time. But the point here is is that Walmart has been smart. They haven't even made an official announcement that they're into cryptocurrency. We only know it because of a patent. And so they've been sitting back, letting Facebook play the villain. Facebook has been playing the villain with LibraCoin, and I honestly do not even know if Facebook will launch LibraCoin because the government is on them so hot and so heavy. So we'll just have to see exactly what happens there. But Walmart has done it smart. And now when compared to Facebook's plan, Walmart seems like a slam dunk to get approved. All they want is a stable coin to use in their store, you know? So they don't want to take over the U.S. currency. They don't want to take over the Federal Reserve. They just want people to spend Walmart coin. So uh, we'll have to see what happens with that when it gets a little closer to launching. Cosmos. This is a very interesting story, guys. So Cosmos recently popped up in the top 20. It's been running strong. It's very similar to Tezos, which we looked at a story involving Tezos yesterday and their founder. I'll put that video up above if you want to check it out. But Cosmos has now uh, is priming itself maybe to pass Ethereum. And you might say, wow, that's really crazy. But just remember, Where's Blockbuster? My wife recently got me a Make It a Blockbuster night shirt, and I've been so excited. I can't wait, wait to wear it on a video because to me, Blockbuster represents old systems that could not change. Blockbuster had the chance to buy Netflix, dwarfed it at one time, and they just let it take them over. Will Ethereum do the same thing? It's an older generation blockchain, and with the speed at which technology progresses, I don't know. Is Ethereum already old? It, it appears it may be. Their programming language Solidity was already used by Tron. Of course, there was the white page paper, you know, plagiarism or white paper plagiarism scandal, but they used Solidity. And what that's done is that's allowed them to cast a net to Ethereum developers to bring them over to Tron without the cumbersome burden, cumbersome burden, excuse me, of gas, which is expensive. Tron has a much better system for you know being able to develop without having to use that. You use bandwidth there. Cosmos <laughs> has created three programming languages that do different things. Now, one of them is called Ethermint, and Ethermint is actually a replica of Solidity. So they're trying the same kind of Tron game plan to bring Ethereum developers over. They also have a programming language that is called SES, Secure ECMAScript. Now, this is actually built by Algor or Agoric. It is a blockchain company, but here's what this is. It's like a version of JavaScript. So that also is something that a lot of developers already know how to use. I'm not saying I'm not a developer, so I don't know if it's exactly going to carry over. However, I can assure you that the gap that developers would have to cross in order to move from JavaScript to uh, you know this SES, because it uses something similar to JavaScript, 
it'll be you know much easier and it won't be as far as having to jump from like C plus to solidity or something like that. The third language is called Kadena Mint. Now this is by Kadena, which is a JP Morgan blockchain spinoff. But here was the important thing I wanted to say is that the founder of Kadena, Stuart Popejoy, uh, says that this language is going to be much more advanced by Ether or much more advanced than Ethermint. Now that was a passive aggressive shot at Ethereum and at Solidity. Basically what they're saying there is, yeah, we have Ethermint if you want to use it, if you know Solidity already, but we got something way better. So we'll just have to see how all this works out. Only time will tell. Last story of the day, British tax authority snooping around crypto exchanges. They have sent letters. This is the uh, HM Revenue and Customs, HMRC as it is known locally in the UK. They've sent letters to eToro, which we're going to be talking about very soon on the channel, um, a great uh, exchange website. Also, Coinbase and CEX. Yeah, that's right, CEX. I thought I was saying SEX for a second. That's what we used to say in the third grade. But anyways, CEX. Dot io uh, three exchanges they've all been sent letters by the uk requesting names and transaction logs of all their customers now none of those three exchanges have came out and said that they want that they're going to give those they just haven't made any comments about it but it's going to be awfully hard for those companies to withhold that information it feels like a not a bubble that's being popped but they're just trying to squeeze every single thing they can squeeze to get as much information as possible and i speculate that this is not actually about getting tax money from last year or the year before because it says that only two to three years worth of transaction logs are are requested so what that means is your biggest whales got into crypto longer than three years ago or most of them and so when we're looking at it back over the last two years people lost money and so they can actually show losses on their taxes and not have to give the government money i believe that this is more for the government along with the irs requesting information um you know from tax holders to kind of establish a baseline for who has what. Because if we go on this epic bull run and we go up to six figures in Bitcoin, now that's a lot of money that the government feels like they're going to be able to tap into any government in the world. If they can isolate and figure out who the crypto holders are, then they can even fix the digital asset laws and still reap huge rewards from those crypto gains. And I think that's really what this is about. We'll just have to see. We do know the IRS did send out letters recently to a bunch of people in America. So the UK is not the only country to be doing this. So guys, let us know what you think about this video. Are you scared if you live in the UK? Do you think that Ethereum can be passed? Do you think the Ripple will work with the US government? You guys drop your comments down below. Don't forget to get your contest entry for uh, you know our contest. Like, comment, and subscribe for a chance to win $1,000 in crypto and prizes. Till next time, BitBoy out.